the new adventures of Sherlock Holmes, starring Nigel Bruce as Dr. Watson and Tom Conway as Sherlock Holmes. Now, once again, we find ourselves in Dr. Watson's comfortable book-lined study. A blazing log crackles cheerily on the hearth. The cordial smile of welcome beams on the good doctor's friendly countenance. Well, good evening, Mr. Bell. Sit down, sit down. Thank you. Ah, it isn't often you find such a perfect combination as this. Cozy room, cheerful fire, comfortable armchair. Not to mention an expert storyteller. Uh, thank you, Mr. Bell. You're very kind. A setup like this takes your mind off your worries and troubles. So don't be surprised if I just sit back and relax and let you carry on. Well, that's what I'm here for. I've always said there's nothing like a good detective story for mental recreation. Most of our great men of affairs have been addicted to them, you know. Presidents, prime ministers, scientists, and businessmen. And the Sherlock Holmes adventures still head the list of all detective stories. What's it going to be tonight? Well, tonight, as I said last week, I'm going to tell you about the greatest shock that Sherlock Holmes ever gave me. The greatest shock? It must have been some voltage. You'll, you'll find that out, Mr. Bell. Now, Dr. Watson, how about the greatest shock Sherlock Holmes ever gave you? Well, it was in the second year of my married life. I hadn't seen Holmes for almost a month due to having successfully resumed my medical practice. And one day I received an urgent note from Mrs. Hudson. Mrs. Hudson, she was Holmes' landlady in Baker Street. She certainly was, and a long-suffering woman she was, too. Why she stood for Holmes, I never could fathom. His habits were calculated to try the patience of a saint. Yes, he was easily the worst tenant in London, and yet Mrs. Hudson adored him. A case of the king can do no wrong. Exactly, and yet she stood in the deepest awe of him and never dared interfere, however dangerous his proceedings might seem. So you can imagine my feelings when our note said that Mr. Holmes was in a dreadful state and she considered it serious enough to disobey his commands and to send for me. Well, I snatched my hat and medical case and set out for Baker Street post-haste. A terrified Mrs. Hudson greeted me on the doorstep, her face stained with tears. Oh, Dr. Watson, thank God you got my note. Come in, sir, come in. Well, Mrs. Hudson, what's up? What's happened to Mr. Holmes? Oh, Dr. Watson, it's terrible just to see him lying there like that. I, I can't stand it any longer. He's breaking my heart. Oh, no, 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 Mrs. Hudson, this won't do you now. Pull yourself together. What's the matter with Mr. Holmes? Oh, he's dying. What? Yes, sir. For three days he's been sinking. Hasn't taken a mouthful of food. I, I doubt if he'll last a day out. Well, why didn't you send him for me before? He, he wouldn't let me. Oh, you know what he's like, Dr. Watson, when he's got his mind set against anything. Yes, indeed I do. But this morning, when I went in and saw him there, his bones sticking out of his face, his great eyes all bright with fever, and his lips with that awful crust on them, oh, and his hands twitching and twitching, I couldn't stand it any longer. I couldn't stand by and watch and die, could I? I thought to myself, orders or no, I'm sending for you. Yes, I should hope so. So I said to him, but Mr. Holmes, this is an extremity. He didn't say anything. I don't think he even heard me, Doctor. He's out of his head most of the time, croaking and moaning to himself. Oh, Dr. Watson, it's a pitiful sight. Poor Mr. No, Holmes. No, 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 perhaps it's not as bad as you think. <laughs> I pray heaven it's not. Well, I'll go up and see what's to be done. Oh, yes, sir. But I'm afraid he's not long for this world. Poor Mr. Now, Holmes. Now, Mrs. Hudson, you pull yourself together. He mustn't know how you feel about him. It'd upset him. He hates to be pitied. I'd, uh, I'd better go in alone. Yes, sir. Holmes? I say, Holmes? I, I doubt if he can hear you, sir. You'd better go right in. Very well. Oh. Oh. Good heavens. He is sick. Oh, Dr. Watson, you must save him. Shh, Mrs. Hudson, you, you stay outside. Running round and round in a circle. Faster, faster. He's catching up to us all. Holmes. Holmes, old fellow, it's me. Eh? Holmes, it's me, Watson. Don't you know me? Watson? Watson? Oh, yes. I, I seem to remember. Watson, of course. So she sent for you after all. I... I wondered how long she could hold out. Holmes! My, my poor fellow! Yes, we seem to have fallen on evil days. Hey, Watson? Never thought you'd see me in this shape, did you? Oh, I fall bare at your funeral, and now look at me. <laughs> it's, it's all right, old chap. We'll fix you up. Have you about again in no time. Just let me take your pulse. Uh, stand back, Watson, stand back. If you value your life, don't touch me. Don't touch me. But why? Because I wish it. Isn't that enough? Well, I only wanted to help. 
Then do as I say. I, I know what's wrong with me. I, I'm the only man in London who does it. It's a terrible disease. and contagious, that's it, Watson. Contagious by touch. So keep your distance or you'll catch it, too. Great heavens, Holmes. Do you suppose that matters to me at a time like this? It wouldn't affect me in the case of a stranger. Do you imagine it prevent me from doing my duty to, to my best friend? Stand back, Watson. It's out of your power. You could do nothing. If you stand where you are, I'll talk you. You mustn't excite me. It, it might be fatal. Very well. I must, but uh, what is this sickness? A colic disease from Sumatra. Only a few men understand it. I, I contracted it down along the docks from the Oriental sailors. I've been doing some recent research down there. It had a medical criminal aspect. Very interesting, Watson. Very interesting Asiatic diseases. Asiatic cruelty. Strange pathological possibilities. But water doesn't run uphill. It's funny, eh, hey, Watson? Water? You, you can't write in water. I, I've tried. I, I've tried, but you, but you can't. Holmes, you're not yourself. A sick man is like a child. You could be master elsewhere, but when it comes to the sick room, it's time for me to take charge. I'm going to examine your symptoms and treat you. Stop it. If I've got to have a doctor, at least get me one I can trust. Holmes. Don't you trust me? As a friend, certainly, but facts are facts. You're just a general practitioner of not very much knowledge or experience and very often muddled. Yes, decidedly muddled. Holmes, that remark is unworthy of you. It shows the state of your nerves. Very well. What do you know about Tapanuli fever? Or the black form of the corruption? Well, I've never heard of either of them. You see? Very well, let me call in Dr. Ainstry. He's the greatest living authority on tropical diseases. And he happens to be in London now. I can get him here inside half an hour if you'll just... No, no, I won't have him. I won't have him. I'm the one who's sick. I'll be cured my way or not at all. There's only one man who can save me. Oh. Oh, dear. I, uh, I'm exhausted. I wonder how that she feels when it pours electricity into a non-conductor. Holmes. Holmes, you're wandering again. Let me at least pour you a glass of water. What a mess this table is in. Don't want water. Give me the moon. Hello. What's this curious little ivory box? I've never seen that before. Don't touch it, Watson. Don't touch it. But, Holmes... It's mine. I won't have it touched. Give it to me. Handle it with tongs. Like this. Ah. That's better. It's mine. Yeah. Mine. Holmes, Holmes. Get back into bed this instant. And, and give me that box. No, no, you can't have it. It's, it's mine. I'm going to take it to bed with me. It's mine. My own little ivory box. Nobody shall take it from me. Very well. Now, now keep covered up. Uh, that's better. You'll kill yourself if you aren't careful. Watson. I say, Watson. Yes? Have you any change in your pocket? Yes. Any silver? A good deal. How many half crowns? Half crowns, let me see. One, two, three, five. Not enough, Watson, not enough. However, they'll have to do. Place them in your watch pocket, Watson. Very well. Now, put the rest of your money in your left hand trousers pocket. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes, but why? It will balance you so much better that way. Holmes, this is the end. You're wondering. You're delirious. I'm going to get Ainsty or, or the man you mentioned. I don't care which. Very well. If you must, let it be Mr. Calverton Smith. Calverton Smith? I never heard of him. Possibly not, Watson. It may surprise you to know that the only man on earth who understands this disease isn't a medical man. He's a planter. A planter? Yes, millionaire rubber planter. An outbreak of this malady on his plantation in Sumatra caused him to study the disease. He's now in London. Good. What's his address? 13 Lower Burke Street. 13 Lower Burke Street. Very well. I'll fetch him at once. I warn you, he may not come. There's no good feeling between us. His, his nephew died, you see, Watson. I, I had suspicions of foul play. I, I told his uncle so. The boy died horribly. You must soften him, Watson. Describe my condition. Be beg him. Pray him. Get him here by any means. He he's the only one who can save me. You will bring him to me, Watson. Don't worry, old fellow. I'll bring him here and have to knock him unconscious to do it. No, you must persuade him to come. But be sure to return ahead of him. Not with him, Watson. 
ahead of him, you understand? Very well. It's vital, Watson, vital. One thing more. Yes? I'm worried about oysters, Watson. What? They're so Why prolific. oysters? They're so prolific. Pretty soon the world will be overrun by oysters. Oh, Holmes, you're off again. There was I. <laughs> Strange how the brain controls the brain. You still here, Watson? I, I thought you'd gone long ago. Well, I'm going at once. I'll be back in no time. If you want anything, ring for Mrs. Hutz. First, the ocean will be overrun with them. Millions of them, millions of oysters. Oh, Dr. Watson, how is he? Here's Mr. Listlard of Scotland Yard. He dropped in to inquire about Mr. Holmes. Hello, Dr. Watson. How do things stand? How's the old boy? He's a very sick man, I'm afraid, Lestard. Uh, yes, yes, I heard some rumour to that effect. Lestard, you're a cold-blooded fish. Ah, uh, possibly. But I think I'll stay around until you return. How about a dish of tea in the back parlour? Hey, Mrs. Hudson. Oh, you. Speaking of tea at a time like this, I'm ashamed of you. With Mr. Holmes lying upstairs practically on his deathbed. All right, I'll bring you a cup. But I hope it chokes you, that I do. <laughs> Nine, eleven, thirteen. Ah, here we are. Oh, suppose he's not at home. He must be. He must be. Yes, sir. Is Mr. Carlton Smith in? Yes, sir. Will you take my card in to him at once and tell him it's it's urgent? Yes, sir. But uh, he's in his study working. He don't like to be disturbed. But it's a matter of life and death. Don't you understand? I must see him. Here, here. Perhaps uh, this will help. Oh, thank you, sir. <laughs> I'll do my best. Will you step inside, sir? I'll be a minute. A gentleman to see you, Mr. Smith, sir. Says it's urgent. Who is he? What does he want? Here's his card, sir. Watson? Dr. Watson? I don't know him. How often have I told you, Staples, I'm not to be disturbed when I'm working in my study? But he says he must see you. It's a matter of life and death, he says. Tell him to go to blazes. I'm not at home. I won't see him. Tomorrow morning, Oh, perhaps. but you must, sir. It can't wait. I won't leave until I've told you What's the whole... What's this? What's the meaning of this intrusion? I said tomorrow, didn't I? I'm sorry, Mr. Smith, but I must see you now. It's about Sherlock Holmes. Sherlock Holmes? Sherlock Holmes, did you say? Yes, I've just come from him. Well, well, but what about Holmes? He's desperately ill, dying. That's why I've come to you. Holmes dying? Oh, dear, dear. I'm sorry to hear it. I only know him through some business dealings, of course, but I have a great respect for his talents and his character. You see, he is an amateur of crime, as I am of disease. Uh, for him, the villain. For me, the microbe. Uh, yes, I, I believe my offenders are even more deadly than his. Mr. Smith, it was because of your special knowledge of Eastern diseases that Sherlock Holmes has sent for you. Eastern diseases? Eastern diseases, dear me. Don't tell me that he's contracted some oriental disease. Yes, Mrs. Smith. He's been making some professional inquiries on the docks, working among the oriental sailors. Oh, so that's it. Oh, dear, dear. I, I trust the matter is not as grave as you suppose. How long has he been ill? About three days. Uh, delirious? Yes, from time to time. Oh, dear me, this does sound serious. Yes, it would be inhuman not to go to his aid, wouldn't it? The case is certainly exceptional. I'll come with you at once, Dr. Uh, Watson. With me, well, uh, you see that... Uh, well, I'm afraid I, I can't return with you, sir. I, I have some other appointments, uh, uh, patients that I must see. I'll, uh, I'll see you later. Oh, yes, 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 I quite understand. I'll go alone. Oh, yes, that would be better in any case. We must avoid too much excitement, too many people. Uh, yes, Dr. Watson, you can rely on my being with Mr. Holmes within half an hour. <laughs> In just a moment, we'll return to Sherlock Holmes and find out if Mr. Culverton Smith is able to cure the detective's strange malady. Well, Dr. Watson, I see what you meant by the greatest shock Sherlock Holmes ever gave you. And I can hardly wait to hear the rest of the story. What happened after you'd seen Mr. Culverton Well, Smith? I hurried back to Baker Street as fast as I could, just as Holmes had instructed me to. Mrs. Hudson met me at the door. 
Any change, Mrs. Hudson? Has anything happened while I was gone? No, Dr. Watson. He called me in to light the gas a few minutes ago. He won't have a tap full. He says it hurts his eyes. How did he look? Oh, a little better, I should say. He's awful weak, but he's not delirious anymore. Good, good. Where's Lestrade? Oh, he's about somewhere. Down in the kitchen, annoying the cook, most likely. I never did see such a man for eating. Heartless brute. Well, I'll go up to Mr. Holmes. Here I am, Holmes. Did you see him? Yes, yes, he's coming. Admirable, Watson. Admirable. I knew I could count on you. What did you tell him? I told him about the sailors in the East End and uh, that you were delirious. Quite right. Yes. You can now disappear from the scene. What? I'll do no such thing. I'm going to wait and hear his opinion. So you shall, Watson, so you shall, but not where he can see you. There's no hiding place in the room except the space behind the head of my bed. Suppose you crawl in there. Crawl in there? Watson, I'm a sick man. I must be human. It's got to be behind the bed or not at all. I don't want you discussing the case over my dead, inert body. You can hear what he says perfectly from your hiding place. There he is now. What's it to be, Watson? Behind the bed or out of the room? Oh, very well, if you insist. I'll... I'll wedge myself in there. There's not much room in here. Quick, Watson, quick, if you love me. Oh, it's a tight fit. I can't, I can't move a muscle. Good. Don't speak. Don't move. Whatever happens, don't budge. Just listen. Listen to every word. Don't move. Don't move. It's a gentleman by the name of Smith, Mr. Holmes. He says you sent for him. It's all right. I understand the case. You can leave us. Yes, sir. Oh. So there you are, my fine fellow. Pretty bad fix, eh? Oh. Holmes. Oh. Holmes, can you hear me? It's me, Smith. You? I... I hardly dared hope you'd come. I should think not. But here I am. Coals of fire, Holmes. Huh? Coals of fire. Very good. Very noble of you. You're the only man who can save me. You realize that, eh? Do you know what is the matter with you? The, the same the same thing that killed your nephew. Yes, dear Victor. He was dead on the fourth day. Strong, hearty fellow he was, too. Surprising that you should both contract such a strange, out-of-the-way disease in the heart of London. A disease, too, of which I had made a special study. Very smart of you to notice that in Victor's case, but rather uncharitable to suggest that it was cause and effect. Oh, I... I, I knew that you did it. Oh, you did, did you? Well, you can't prove it. You've got a fine nerve spreading reports like that about me and then crawling to me for help when you're in trouble. Oh, don't... Don't hold it against me. Let bygones be bygones. I'll put it out of my head. Oh, only cure me and I'll forget it. Forget what? About Victor Savage's death. You were as good as admitted it, but... I'll forget it. I, I swear I will. It'll make little difference whether you forget or remember. You'll never see the inside of a witness box. Oh, no. Quite another shape box, my dear Holmes, I assure you. I'm not interested in my nephew anymore. It's you I'm after. So, you think you contracted this disease among the sailors, eh? That's the only way I can account for it. And you think you have brains. Consider yourself smart, don't you? Well, I'm smarter than you are, Mr. Holmes. Think back. Think back. Can't you remember any other way you could have got this thing? I can't think. My mind's gone. For heaven's sake, help me. Yes, I'm going to help you. I want you to understand how this happened to you. I want you to know before you die. Uh, oh, oh, it's terrible. Give me something to stop the pain. I... Oh, so now it's painful, eh? Yes, the natives used to do some squealing toward the end. Now, listen. Can't you remember any unusual incident in your life just before your symptoms began? Uh, no. No, nothing. Something came by post. Remember that? I'm too sick to remember. Well, I'll help you. You hear me? You shall hear me. Uh, yes, I... Oh, oh, the pain, it's, it's killing you me. You remember a box? A little ivory box. It came by post on Wednesday. Do you remember? Yes, yes. It, it had a spring inside. I, I cut myself... It, it true blood. It was a joke. That was no joke, you fool. That spring was covered with the germs of this disease. Who asked you to cross my path? You've got what was coming to you. I sent that box and it has killed you. I, I remember. 
The box, the, the little ivory box. There it is on the table. Ah, so it is. Yes, by George, the very one. Well, it may as well leave the room in my pocket. Here, Mr. Sherlock Holmes. Here goes your last shred of evidence. Oh, you can have it, only save me, save me. Now, at last, you know the truth. You know I've killed you. You knew so much about the fate of Victor Savage that I've sent you to share it. Now, now what are you going to do? Do, Mr. Sherlock Holmes? Why, now I shall sit here and watch you die. I... Uh, I can hardly see the, the light. The, turn up the gas. The shadows begin to fall, do they? Very well. I'll turn it up so that I may see you better. There. Uh-huh. And now, is there any other little service I can do for you, my friend? Yes, you can give me a match and a cigarette. You... What's the meaning of this? You're not sick? You've been malingering. You're not sick at all. Not sick, just weak. Yes, the best way to act a part is to be it. I give you my word that for three days I haven't touched food, drink, nor tobacco. It, um, it has been rather irksome. Ah, yes, here are the cigarettes. Ah... That's better. Very much better. I hope it chokes you. I've a mind to do it myself. Not so vindictive, my dear Mr. Smith. I fancy I hear Lestrade step on the stair. When you turned up the light, that was his signal to come and get you. Where well, you... Come in, Lestrade. Come in. Now you've trapped him, Mr. Holmes. Yes. Here's your man. You can arrest him. On what charge, may I ask? The murder of one Victor Savage. And the uh, attempted murder of one Sherlock Holmes. Take him away, Lestrade. Take him away. Oh, no, you don't. I'll knock your head in. You. Look out, Lestrade. <laughs> It's all right, Mr. Holmes. I've got the handcuffs on him. A nice trap this is, Mr. Sherlock Holmes. It'll bring you to the dock, not me. You asked me to come here to cure you. I was sorry for you, so I came, and now you make charges against me. Insane charges for which you have no proof. My word is as good as yours, Holmes. Remember that? Good heavens, I'd totally forgotten. My dear Watson, a thousand apologies. You can come out now. Uh, about time, too. I'm just about numb crouching behind there all this time. Uh, Mr. Smith, allow me to present my witness, Dr. Watson. I'm sure he found your conversation most enlightening. Well, that settles that. Come on, you. Keep moving. Well, now uh, you're pulling my leg. The, the spring didn't really prick you, did it, Holmes? Uh, no. Uh, well, you see, my dear Watson... Uh, a thing you have to understand is that neither you nor Mrs. Hudson are particularly convincing when it comes to acting. So it was necessary to impress you with the reality of my condition in order to obtain results. And then, you may believe that I poo-pooed my your professional ability, but you can put that down as a part of the delirium. I have the highest regard for your talents, both as a doctor and as an historian. Oh, now you're pulling my leg. Look here. You didn't, as I said, really get to... Uh pricked with that spring, did you? Oh, certainly not. I always handle strange packages with suspicion. Well, what I want to know is how you managed to assume that ghastly appearance. A three days of fasting does not improve anyone's beauty, Watson. For the rest, a bit of Vaseline on the forehead, belladonna on the eye, rouge on the cheekbones, and a crust of beeswax on the lips all produce a rather satisfactory effect. Only, I couldn't afford to let you get too good a look at it. Or take your pulse and temperature. Quite. And now, if you will tell Mrs. Hudson that her invalid has recovered sufficiently to desire large steak with plenty of fried onions, ah, I've been promising it to myself for hours. Tonight's Sherlock Holmes adventure was dramatized from Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's story, The Dying Detective. 